Howdy, howdy. I'm something noticeable. And on a stream that I had recently, my one year affiliate stream, someone asked me about my streaming setup. However, when I was answering that, I got a bit sidetracked because I was technical difficulties with a camera that I was using that night. So I told them I'd make a YouTube video and here's that video. To me, there are five major parts of a streaming setup, audio, video, behind the scenes, miscellaneous, and a fifth category that I'll cover later. This is by no means an order of importance, just the order of which I wrote them in my script. Let's start off with the audio. My setup consists of five major parts, the microphone, the soundboard, my mic arm, my headphones, and my pop filter. I use an Audio-Technica AT2035 microphone. It is a condenser mic, so it does need phantom power. It's a great microphone for getting up close to. However, when I have to do Ring Fit Adventure or other games that require me further away from my computer, I do run a different microphone so that I'm more able to pick up my voice and what's going on. The soundboard that I use is a Mackie Pro FX 12V3 that I got on Super Sale. The original plan for me was to get a 10V3 instead of a 12V3. However, when I went to go buy it on Sweetwater, Sweetwater was having a sale going on, so the 12V3 was already cheaper than it usually is. And then the specific 12V3 that I got actually was the floor model, so it was the one that they used in the videos and the demonstrate in the floor, so it was on even more sale. So it was only like $75 more than the 10V3. So I'm really glad, glad I got it. Originally got it to do a podcast with my friends, but then COVID-19 happened, so that plan went under. Um, it's a great soundboard. The uh, FX part means that there's effects on it. I love it. Uh, I highly recommend that if you want to get a soundboard, you get the Mackie Pro FX 6V3 because the odds that you need 12 ports are very little, let alone 6, and the 6 is much cheaper than the 12. But it's a great soundboard series anyways. My headphones are Sennheiser's Game 1 headphones. They've lasted me about five years so far, and they have amazing audio quality. The microphone that they have on them is eh at best. It does do good noise canceling, but it sounds pretty, pretty janky. But the headphones themselves, I love. They have no noise canceling, though, to keep that in mind. There is no active noise canceling. The ear cuffs aren't even like the fake leather material. They're felt, so they only block the really highs. Like if I click a mouse, I can't hear the highs of it, which is really nice but it doesn't block anything else, just as a word of warning. My mic arm is just a standard desk mic arm. There's a cable that runs through the mic arm and it can move in all directions. So it's pretty nice. It's nice for if I the need to move the microphone away or if I sit back, I can move the microphone back with me. Uh, and then the pop filter I have is just the one that I got on Amazon. If you don't know what a pop filter does, it basically prevents from the plosives from being picked up from the microphone. Plosives are the p and b sounds that you make which are basically holding back air and then releasing all of it at once. And the pop filter helps protect your mic from that. Here's what it sounds like with the pop filter. Pop, bop, pop. Here's what it sounds like without the pop filter. Pop, bop, pop. Next, let's cover video. My video setup primarily consists of one thing, and that's the webcam you're actually using to look at me with. It is a Logitech C922 ProStream webcam. It is about $100, but because of COVID, it's a bit difficult to find. I do own two of them, so that means that your streaming software is able to pick up the two separately, which is pretty nice. It's primarily if I'm doing like an unboxing or if I'm doing something with my hands, like making a magic deck, so you can see what's going on there and also see my face. The camera also does have a microphone. It's a bit dodgy, but like if you need some ambience or if you need a microphone in a pinch, it works fine. This is what the camera microphone sounds like. Just if you're wondering, it's not as good as the microphone I'm using in front of me right now, but again, in a pinch, it'll work fine. Let's now cover BTS. Not that BTS. I primarily use the Adobe and Apple softwares for stuff I need to do off stream. All of my art is done in Adobe Illustrator and Adobe After Effects. Most of the sounds in my stream are done in Logic Pro. This video will be edited in Final Cut and my few drawing streams are also done in Adobe Photoshop. To stream, I currently use Streamlabs OBS, however, I'll probably swap to OBS Live soon. I highly recommend Slobs or Streamlabs OBS to anyone that is just starting out streaming. It's very intuitive and has lots of overlays that you can purchase. That, however, is why I'm swapping to OBS Live. I make my own overlays, so having overlays along with other functionality bundled under Slobs Prime is a no for me. So if you're willing to pay for Slobs Prime, by all means, use Slobs. It's amazing. However, I personally may be swapping soon. 
Next is the miscellaneous category, which is more of a catch-all. This category will be discussing my PC, my lighting, and other computer-related things that I use regularly. For lighting, I have a ring light and an LED panel that I use to light my streams that I bought off Amazon. My uh, LED panel just looks like this. It's not on right now because I don't need a light because it's daytime right now. Um, but my ring light is behind the camera, turned on, kind of pointed upwards so that it just diffuses the light. I have an Acer keyboard that I use, which is older than I am. Fun fact, I also have a Razer Orb Weaver keypad. I use a Logitech MX vertical mouse, and I have a lot of 8-bit Do Xbox and Nintendo controllers at my disposal. My PC has a Core i7 CPU, RTX 2080 GPU, 16 gigabytes of RAM, a terabyte of storage, Tough Gaming B460M plus Wi-Fi motherboard, the cheapest case I could find that wasn't crap, and some minor RGB so I can see in there and it just glows yellow. For my monitors, I have a Dell Ultrawide as my main monitor and a Samsung TV from like 2008 as my secondary monitor. It doesn't have to be anything beautiful, I just have to be able to read chat and know what's going on in Discord. So, dodgy quality, but it's fine. Uh, I use an HD60S Elgato capture card to capture my Switch and other things I need to capture. I also have some Cam Link 4Ks that I borrow off my dad, uh, but they're all great. However, again, they're kind of pricey in the $100, $200 price range, so just be wary of that. And I have a 2020 13-inch MacBook Pro that I use to edit art and to edit uh, anything else that I need to do, music, video, stuff like that. Finally, we have this mysterious fifth category that made me wondering why it wasn't under miscellaneous. I felt this category deserves its own section, and this fifth category is just friends and family. I'm very fortunate to have a friend group, a streaming group, and a family who are very supportive of my stream. My friends very regularly watch me and donate money to my stream. My streaming group is consisted of three amazing people, Torkoal25, Ryontap, and Lixi. Go check them out in the description below, and also join our Discord. And my parents baked me a cake for Frick's sake on my one year anniversary stream. Like, that's insane. Anyways, that is my streaming setup as of the beginning of 2021. If you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comments down below or join the Discord and ask me there. I stream almost nightly starting at nine. Fridays are a bit iffy, but other than that, go check me out, twitch.tv slash something noticeable. Thanks for watching. Bombs away.